Steve here from the College of Engineering and Architecture, presenting on tools, training, and transformation through UDL. Our faculty partners from the College of Engineering and Architecture are Alice Clancy and Associate Professor Vikram Pakrashi. Thanks very much. Um, so my name is Alice Clancy and here with my colleague, uh, Dr. Vikram Pakrashi, we're going to present the work of the four College of Engineering and Architecture faculty partners. So I'm going to present the work of myself and Dr. Jennifer Keenahan, and Vikram is going to present the work of himself and Dr. John Healy. And so the name, just first before we start, we just wanted to say, Thank you to, um, for the, the talks this morning and for this day. Um, we're finding, like Tom, from your talk and from our partners' talks, like it's really exciting. And I already feel my presentation is out of date um, because I've got so many ideas. So bear with us. Um, so the name, the overall name of our talk is Tools, Training, and Transformation. So we're all work, kind of working in different ways across um, our, through our roles in the college. And for myself, um, what the role and what the funding has enabled me to do is to take time out as a part-time member of staff, to take a more strategic role in the implementation and thinking about our pedagogy. And so the role has enabled me to take on, the, the fir the fir for the first time, a part-time staff member in our school has taken on the role of Director of Teaching and Learning. And so that, what that's allowed me to do is to implement and to think about how we can implement the principles of universal design for learning across our um, programs, but also in a more inclusive way for our staff, so to enable part-time staff members, people who are working in different ways, to engage with that. So, no small task. Um, so, I've been working generally um, in, in terms of teaching and learning across the school, um, with workshops, discussions, and kind of setting up training, um, and then co-facilitating the digital badge with Dr. Jennifer Keenahan, which I'll talk about um, when I talk about her work. Um, but more specifically, I've been focusing on Architectural Design Studio, which is a key um, module in the architecture, landscape architecture, and planning, um, sorry, uh, planning modules. Now, I've been focusing on Architectural Design Studio. Um, there's kind of similar principles in landscape architecture and in slightly different in planning, but I'm focusing on architecture with a view to kind of expanding out. So it's a key module. Um, it's half of the credits each, each term for all of our undergraduate students for the four years of the undergraduate. Um, and it's a very exciting module and involving module. And as you can see from these photographs, it's not a traditional lecture-based module. Um, we work, and this is maybe one of the reasons why I'm so bad at public speaking, we work through discussion and kind of more informal group tutorials. And the students work in kind of an iterative design process where they're making models, they're making films, they're drawing. Um, and we're discussing and developing as we go. So it's, it's, it's got some really amazing universal design for learning principles, but as you, and maybe as you can start to tell from these photographs, there's much more we can do. Um, so it's a key module, but it's also at a key time of change. So we're in the process um, of completely overhauling our curriculum to um, start to better address um, the climate crisis. So UCD is forming a key part of a consortium of the six schools of architecture across um, Ireland who have joined forces with industry in a major HCI um, funded project which was just launched yesterday where we are over the next three years through testing in the undergraduate architectural design studio a complete overhaul of our methods um, skills um, content um, and thinking around education in how we are going to equip our graduates um, to better deal with the effects of the climate crisis. And what I, what I think in by working with, with them on this is that by incorporating and including the principles and kind of embedding universal design for learning within this, we're going to more meaningfully connect with the changes and the developments in architectural education globally, not only in terms of the climate crisis, but in terms of this much needed societal change. So, um, that's, again, no small task, but I, I think, like, particularly from today, um, coming away with this thing of like, taking one, one thing, what can we do? And I think that's maybe the next stage um, for, for how I'm going to work. But So what, the way I've taken this on is to try to think about um, and what universal design means for me um, and what, where it resonates with design practice is the way it enables er, um, all learners to bring themselves into their education in terms of their ways of thinking, their background, 
um, their, their skills, their ways of working. Um, and that this, by, by bringing this into, um, by bringing themselves, this enriched the learning environment. And we, we design, my experience of design practice was like that, it's in this photograph that I took of craft and architects at work. But I think that by expanding that and by widening the accents, we then potentially have graduates who are able to construct um, a, a much more um, enriched um, um, uh, 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 built environment. So I've worked the project into four overlapping stages, which um, due to time I'm going to um, run through, but the, the slides um, I think will be available afterwards. And I, mean, I think the key principles that are important to get across is that uh, design is a collaborative practice, and I see you, my, my understanding of universal design for learning is that it is a collaborative practice. And the first and the key component is including the student voice um, in, in everything that we do. Identifying and build on existing interest and knowledge. We're not reinventing the wheel. Um, we have, um, there, 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 there's a lot of interest in inclusive teaching, but there's also a lot of expertise um, and we don't realize it. Um, developing the methodology through testing, discussion and feedback, so it's a design process, and then connecting and working into existing timeframes. So in all of the work that I've been doing, I'm connecting into existing discussions, end of term reviews, student surveys, and, 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 and working that way. So. I want to talk very quickly about um, Dr. Keenan's work in civil engineering. She's led a, sco um, a school-wide initiative to promote universal design for learning um, across the school. So she's, she's um, also head of teaching and learning in her school. And she has worked um, extensively with, to, to encourage the uptake in the digital badge. Um, but then more specifically, um, on, on the Ally, um, which is the accessibility software. And her work has had measurable results. Um, and it's through that kind of very careful step-by-step -step, um, that I showed you on the previous slide. So in um, the school kind of, so this was the, on, on the left-hand side, um, on the slide, an indication of um, kind of the uptake of the digital badge in the school in, in, in um, comparison to the, the college before she started her work. And now, presently, in May 2022, the uptake in the digital badge among full-time teaching um, colleagues has gone from 12% to 75% in comparison within the college, and um, from 8% to 20%. So Jennifer has been working incredibly hard. But alongside that, um, with the, 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 her work on Ally, she's, she's managed to, in this short time frame, increase the school Ally accessibility score um, from 55% to 65%, and that's through kind of detailed work, one-to-one -one discussions with colleagues, um, and, and through workshops that she's facilitated. So there's a huge amount of data that they've gone through, and they've managed to make their written, their, their written content and their Brightspace content um, more accessible. Okay, so I'll pass you over to um, Vikram, and here we go. Thanks, Alex. You can see the kind of people who teach engineering in UCD. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So uh, it's great to see that many of you actually exist outside Zoom, so good stuff. Um, so I'll start with uh, John Healy from Electrical and his work. I mean, uh, in, in many cases, we have to read a lot of circuits and make sense of these circuits. And can you read anything? How many kind of you can read this properly? OK, not many. Right, so that was a major problem, and what John did was he started making some changes around this, and not only that you can read, I mean, every single time, uh, there are lots of people who have um, difficulty in, you know, uh, you know uh, not just reading, but some people are partially blind, etc. I can really relate back to it, because at some point, just before joining UCD, my retina detached, my left eye is kind of pre-stressed with a buckle, and I was asking similar questions to my doctor, like, what's going to happen? But, you know, went well for me, but it might not have. So anyway, the question is that the whole idea was to make circuit diagrams properly visible to students, and for blind and visually impaired, do we have a lot of people who are? Uh, probably not so much, but you'll be surprised that there are more than, what do you expect? There's about four people right now who need it right here. And this is not just about this school. 
So what John did was like, um, he not only made some alt texts around these diagrams, I'll just show you an example, that's the easiest. First of all, you can see this, in case there's any problem, you can have these alt texts, you can have like, you can read them, or have a system read, read it out to you, but that's not enough, it's still very, very visual, right? So what John did was, um, he started making, this is an amplifier, you know, the kind of things that increase the, like, you know, faint um, uh, signals into higher signal. You're getting, like, 4G, you try to make it bigger. So on the right-hand side, it's, um, the, the, the closest thing I could think about is, like, one of my friends, he was uh, trying to be a doctor, a surgeon, and he was sewing um, uh, tangerines and stuff just randomly while talking to us. So it's a bit like that. You start making these, um, these, um, um, that green thing, Lego stuff, um, where, <laughs> okay, um, and this is not your real diagram, this is a practice, but if you can do it over and over and over, it's tactile, you start learning how to use that board on the other side, and you, you start making them better, and it is not as much visually oriented as, as, as you, you know, um, uh, as, as usually it, it traditionally is. In fact, we don't have to be, those things used to be visual because of the ways books used to be printed, all right? Um, having said that, uh, uh, a lot has been done uh, by John. As you can see, it's not just him. A, a lot of people in engineering uh, contributed the whole thing. We're talking about 1,500 circuit diagrams. That's engineers way to say 1230, uh, about 1,500, um, uh, about right, but slightly overestimating. Uh, it's 3D printed, you can actually use these as learning uh, tools for everyone. And then you have um, uh, documents coming out from this. So we've had documents, you can see like we, we have contributed in very various places. The ones in blue are coming up. So that's from electrical. Now uh, I'm going to beat my own drum for another four minutes. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to move from uh, the digital space back into the physical space. Uh, we've had some very brief, you know, like, you know, personal chat exchange with School of Business in one of the Zoom meetings. And so we'll have more, more, yeah, more, more, more chat about this. So the idea is that seeing is believing, right? So I think when you went down for a coffee, you saw a tensegrity structure. So yes, I've done, like I was, I took a digital badge in one of the early rollouts, I was a facilitator, but we have been doing some practice exchange, let's say with Sheffield. Last week we were in Poland with EH Dialogue for international relations. We have done United Nations sustainable development goal mapping with Penn State and promotion in engineering and architecture. Uh, I have taken up uh, a personal training with the uh, for, for community engaged learning from June. So I, th I, I always found that to be important. I remember once uh, I used to um, teach in Cork and we did this learning neighborhood kind of lectures where you go and organize lectures in, in, in libraries of uh, neighborhoods that are less privileged sometimes, uh, not to teach them but to have a better engagement and amazing things come out of it. Uh, that's a story for a different time. So what we are starting in one way is, that was through the LEP funding initially, mapping the sustainable development goals into the actual examples in our courses. We have a lot of simulations, we have a lot of digital, but take them back to the physical space. Otherwise, in some ways, we're going to lose the concept of university as it is. Everything will become online and YouTube-based, and it's not enough. Yep. I'm timing myself, don't worry, yeah. So you can see, sometimes you can't go to the lab, but, lab, but the lab can come to you through videos and experiments and things like that. Because data, data is, uh, we have a lot of data right now. We just don't know what to do with it. So that's, that's something we need to do. Um, and also it comes with uh, uh, interesting things. So the last one was the wave base and data. This one is a project of mine right now where we are instrumenting Irish rail trains for the train to go around the tracks as a sensor. So the train now becomes a sensor all around the country. Uh, that's the Malahide Viaduct Bridge. When it uh, collapsed, I used to work in a company and at that point I looked at it. You can see, you can teach the students from data how by passing trains, instrumenting them, you find out where 
the bridge was repaired. Can you see where the bridge was repaired? It's kind of like nothing's going on on there. It's, it's quite stiff. It's in the middle between the two lines. Uh, so it's these kind of hands-on practical things we're going through. Then, uh, let's say, for example, here, how the marine growth underwater can change the forces on offshore monopiles, especially working for um, infrastructure, for example, uh, wind turbine. Uh, those examples, we had a project with fishing nets and structure and monitoring. So all these disciplinary boundaries, as they dry up, unless we bring it forward to in class, the physical space, uh, we are not going to, going to make the point across the whole thing. Uh, last, I guess, a minute and a half, of course, we have many people working like with us, just like, as you said, so uh, lots of acknowledgements, and these are the SDG mapping. Now we are creating a little garden of mechanics. You've seen one of the creatures of the garden downstairs. So we are making 10 of them, and it'll be available as a mechanics walk all around in UCD, one of the things I often find as an engineer, this is the Brachistochrone problem that tells you that it's not along the straight line or a parabola, a ball is going to uh, like move the fastest, it has to be a cycloid. Do it in class, but now anyone and everyone coming in UCD can play with it. Like, unless you play with something, you're not gonna learn anything. So, uh, it, it, it kind of it is, and this is, uh, 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 like on the left hand side you can see a double pendulum, so it does chaotic trajectories, but on the right hand side, uh, what I give them is, I, I give them the, uh, a Hamiltonian and tell them to create the differential equation, and if you're losing me, at that point my students lose me and they're like, do I need to solve this now? So they've got two choices, you either solve this or you make it, and they make it and we put a lead light in it, and you can see a little heart shape being formed, it's chaotic, it's deterministic, but it is so pretty and everything. So I hope that on this note, with that love of learning, that we can finish this um, contribution from engineering. And thank you very much for University of All for, uh, for all supporting us. Thanks a lot. Right.